So the other night, of all things, the ant and the grasshopper were put on my heart. And this is a myth or a fable. And so ease up on the, ah, oh, she's tickling my ear. She's going asunder into myths and fables. This isn't new doctrine. Interestingly enough, the Bible talks a lot about Proverbs 6, 6, go to the ant. That is to say, look to the ant. Oh, sluggard. There's a type of warning here. Consider her ways and be wise really calling the Holy Spirit's really cautioning us away from being idle and not discerning his voice. So often many will say, I, I can't hear the Lord's voice. I can't hear his voice. Holy Spirit is speaking, but he's not going to yell over your distractions. Proverbs 6. Oh, it continues. Without having any chief officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. And that's talking about the ant. Consider her ways. You know, she doesn't need anyone to drag her. The Bible speaks about this in other places, that God doesn't want to have to drag us like, like a mule, you know, to do what we need to do, especially as we mature on this walk. So without anyone telling her, the ant goes. And, and we have a leading of the Holy Spirit, so we really have no reason to fall into idleness and ignoring a season's change and the whole world is amidst a great transition even non-believers you know they are preparing the beast system whether they know it or not the spirit of disobedience the spirit of the world is at work in the uh sons of disobedience that's the, that's what the word says and the spirit of god is at work within us and i've given several words and he's calling us to build so he wants us to really Take heed to his word and be aware of these seasons changes. I believe we have many seasons in our lives and I believe it's different for each person. I've heard people say every single believer has four seasons. Every believer has this. One. I don't believe that's true. And we're going to look at Ecclesiastes, which speaks of various seasons. And I think it varies by person, you know, some um, seasons of healing for some people, just different things based on what the Lord knows we need individually. So we see in, even in Proverbs uh, 30, 25, the ants are a people not strong, yet they provide their food in the summer. Proverbs 13, 4, the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing while the soul of the dil diligent is richly supplied. So there's a comparison. Whenever there's a comparison here where um, go to the ant, that's to say, look to, look to the ant, look at the ant's ways, oh sluggard. Yikes, we don't want to be a sluggard. The other verse that was put to my heart was John 9, 4 through 6 well, four and five really, which are also a bit of a warning. And this is Jesus. And he's saying, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And then I was brought to Ecclesiastes, where specifically in chapter three, one through eight, I'm not going to read all of it. You're familiar with the scripture, but I want to just read the first verse to everything. There is a season to everything, a time for every purpose under heaven. And specifically, there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. That's to say, there's a time to prepare. There's a time to sow. And then that time ends. And then there's a time for harvest. There's even a time for war and there is a time for peace. And so we need to be discerning of when these times are in our lives. And that's, you know, don't freak out. That doesn't mean, oh, I've missed my time. I don't know. It's just about learning to be more sensitive to the voice of Holy Spirit. And the best way to do that is to cut distractions out. Seriously, it's just to cut all distractions out and really take heed to his voice. And this is not about preparation saying um, a lot of people get mad. Are you saying I'm not saved? No, of course not. You know. I don't know the evidences of a living faith in your life. I'm not your God. And then some people will say, are you saying I have to go to Walmart and buy them out and stock up for the end of the world? No. I mean, the truth is all that stuff like we saw in the wilderness can go to rot, can go to rot. And this is about a spiritual preparation, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and learning today in this time of preparation before times of war, because yes, there will be wars and rumors of wars, Matthew 24, but many things will come to pass. This keeps coming through. It's not going to be, you know, so quiet forever. And this is written. I don't need to prophesy to you what is already written. We need to know these things. Okay. So I am going to play this. It's just a quick little like 348 minute video and it's the grasshopper and the ants. 
the grasshopper and the ants. An Aesop's fable with a focus on vocabulary. Ooh. One warm spring day, a grasshopper was playing in a grassy green field when he noticed a line of ants marching along carrying some seeds. Where are you going with that big load? The grasshopper asked one of them. We're taking these seeds to our nest, squeaked the ant. But it's such a beautiful day, said the grasshopper. Come and have fun with me. No, said the ant. I think you should come work with us. It's going to be a long winter with lots of snow. You had better start storing your food now. Why worry about the winter? It's only spring, and there is lots of food everywhere, said the grasshopper as he chewed on a large blade of grass. All through the spring, the grasshopper did nothing except eat and sleep and play. He became quite fat. One day, during the summer, the grasshopper saw the long line of ants again. They were all carrying grains of wheat. Where are you going with all that wheat? The grasshopper asked. We are taking it to our nest to save for winter, said one of the ants. You should gather some wheat too. It's going to be a long winter with lots of snow. I have all the food that I need right now, said the grasshopper. Why worry about winter? It's still summer. All summer, the grasshopper did nothing but eat, sleep, and play. He became even fatter. One day, the grasshopper noticed that leaves were falling from the trees. Autumn had come. Among the leaves, he again saw the long line of ants, all carrying kernels of corn. Where are you going with that corn? The grasshopper asked one of the ants. The ant replied, We are taking it to our nest to save for winter. You should gather some corn too. It's going to be a long winter with lots of snow. That's too much work, said the grasshopper. Winter is not here yet. And when it comes, I am sure I will be able to find some food. A few weeks later, winter came, and the snow began to fall. Just as the ants had predicted, the snow was very deep. This was not a problem for the ants, though. They were all snug in their nest with lots of good food to eat. The grasshopper, however, had trouble finding food. He was very hungry and very miserable all winter. By the time winter had ended, the grasshopper had learned a valuable lesson. It is important to prepare for the future. Moral of the story, work today for what you will need tomorrow. The end. So ignore the moral. I should have cut that off sooner. Uh, because we don't live by morality, but by every word of God. And, and that's not the point of my sharing that was to work today for tomorrow. We trust in the Lord. You know, he is our great provider and he establishes his people even amidst the shaking of the nations. But in closing Luke twelve fifty six, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and we make Pharisees of ourselves when we can't discern the time. Some can be very self-righteous. And be so focused on everything else, that is to be focused upon their own desires and the lust of life, rather than the leading of the Holy Spirit, which is leading all, all of God's people into this continued time of spiritual preparation, which is to rest in the Lord, to trust in him, which may not sound as fantastical as what a lot of people are saying, but will become quite important later at later times you know during times of trial and tribulation where the most the best wealth is going to be being able to rest in the lord to trust in the lord so in closing luke 12 56 hypocrites you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth but how is it you do not discern this time <laughs>